my favorite, favorite, favorite person to uh, react to uh, objectively. The last time that I talked about something that uh, Umar Johnson was talking about, uh, I actually agreed with him 100%. I didn't have one piece of pushback. I agreed with him 100%. I didn't have one piece of pushback for Umar Johnson, and I was surprised. I was surprised, but he was talking specifically about them boys that be going both ways. Them boys that be going, them boys. In the, in the. He was talking about them boys that go both ways. So I, You know, me and Umar Johnson, we don't, we don't differ in opinion when it comes to certain things. Somebody sent me a video and said, Umar was having a conversation about the effects, the negative effects of capitalism. I said, oh, man, Umar talking money? I got to find out what the hell is going on. Uh, make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notifications. I do not support Pan-African communism or socialism. I don't think Karl Marx. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, one thing I will give Umar Johnson is that he's a lot more, uh, he's a lot better with his words because Anton is a C student out here in these streets. So you can't just be starting it off with all of these three or four syllable fucking words, Umar. Give me some time, some time to catch up. Pan Africanism, liberalism. I don't know what he just said. Give me, give me some time. Pan African communism or socialism. Pan African communism and socialism. I, right. we back. I don't think Karl Marx or Friedrich Engels or uh, anyone else, Joseph Stalin or any of the rest of them, had anything that I feel I need to make use of in the struggle to liberate African people. As I often tell people. I am not a capitalist or a communist. I am a pan-Africanist. So what I'm trying to understand is the difference. I thought that a pan-Africanist, and feel free to correct me in the chat because this is an interactive show. I thought that pan-Africanism or a pan-Africanist is a person that identifies a specific way based off of the fact that they black, right? And again, I'm just, I'm observing, right? So he says, I'm not a socialist, I'm not a communist. And I'm not a capitalist. I'm not a socialist. I'm not a communist. I'm not a capitalist, right? So if you don't believe in socialism, which for the people in the back, let me just give you the cliff notes. Uh, socialism is basically a, a way in which society, within society, to where everybody is kind of sort of provided for. Uh, it, it, it requires an overseer such as the government. Um, people live easier lives. There is no incentive for you to continue to try to ex excel better than anybody else because you will not be rewarded as a result of it. Uh, I think it creates a lazy society and, and it allows for uh, people to then become more dependent on the government in order for their survival. All right. It's a take from the rich, give to the poor type of thing. It's horrible. All right, cool. Capitalism on the flip side is what it is that we live in in society. You eat what you kill. The more that you grind, the more successful you become. But the, the caveat to that is uh, the people on the bottom that choose not to participate in society or uh, does not want to grind as hard as you are then going to be the people that suffer as a result of it. Because if you don't eat, you don't kill. Everybody don't just get an opportunity to be able to eat just because they're born. You got to actually put in your work, right? And so capitalism, while not perfect, is the system that we live in, which has allowed for us to be one of the most powerful countries on earth. Socialism is the thing that Bernie Sanders is trying to get us to be more of in which they tax the rich 95%, give it to everybody else, and then it's no incentive for you to actually go out there and grind and hustle and become the best version of yourself, okay? Capitalism rewards the ones that's uh, very vigilant, dedicated, uh, work hard, intentional. Uh, but the problem is that when you look at socialism and you look at capitalism, uh, you start to do away with the middle class because the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, because you then understand how money works and you know how to leverage that, whereas other people are, are just sheep and they're just a part of whatever it is that society is teaching them. But let's continue. I want to hear, hear, hear some of his full thoughts. We have to understand something. The only reason why people would even begin to consider capitalism as a viable economic system of liberation is because slavery gave capitalism a 500 year head start over any other modern economic system. We were the first capital in capitalism and African people need to understand that. The in So somebody Africans in the chat, the hold on, hold on, let me back up for a minute. Somebody in the chat 
said Anton defined commun communism. All right. Socialism, capitalism, and communism is completely different things. All right. So communism is basically something that was uh, championed and highlighted by Karl Marx. Uh, when you seen and you read the, the, the Black Lives Matters website when they when they first came in, into prominence during the pandemic, right? They existed before that, but they came into prominence in the, in the pandemic. One of the problems that people said that they had with Black Lives Matter is that they were trained Marxists, right? They were trained Marxists, which basically mean that they advocated for a class war, a class war in which uh, society and property is largely just publicly owned. Everything is owned by everybody, right? And you're taken care of based off of what you need. So the requirement for you, as far as a contributor into the society, is based off of what your capabilities are, but how much you're provided for is based off of what you need. So it doesn't matter how much you contribute physically, you take out of it what you need, not necessarily what you contribute, which is the complete opposite of capitalism, right? It's take from the rich, give to the, they say to the poor, I say to the lazy, so it's based off of you don't get to keep what you kill. You keep what you need and you give everything else to everybody else and everything is publicly owned by everybody. That's what communism is, okay? Largely championed by Karl Marx. And I'm breaking it down from a C student's perspective. So when you see people, right, and a lot of y'all are not familiar with this because they throw around these big terms. And then they don't want to educate you as to what they mean. It's similar to going into an information technology environment and they throwing around these big terms. But if you just understood the terms, you would understand exactly what they're communicating. Umar Johnson, for the sake of this conversation, is saying that I'm not a capitalist, I'm not a communist, and I'm not a socialist. All right? First capital in capitalism. So when you make, when you force people to work four or five centuries for free and you build up wealth off of their backs, which gives birth to an industrial revolution, and you use that to tout how economically intelligent you are, it's very fraudulent because it was slavery that made capitalism what capitalism is. So along And this is the one problem that me and Umar Johnson have a problem with is because he's running in the Victim Olympics with this argument. Umar Johnson is saying that America benefited off of slave labor, which is one of the reasons why it became a powerhouse and why capitalism became prevalent within society today. He's right. He's absolutely right. But here's the problem with his argument. A, slavery existed way before Africans uh, or African Americans, as we define them now, became a part of what it is that we see as a system, the economic driver of growth in the United States of America. The other side of it is that the Africans participated in, in capitalism also. They just wasn't as good as negotiators or didn't get the best side of the deal. So when the slave trade happened, it was being participated in and by not only the people that was happening on, on, for the Europeans that was then building America and capitalizing off of it, but also the Africans, they was just selling the slaves for peanuts, right? They didn't really understand how to capitalize. And so as a result, A, they got the bad end of the deal and then B, they lost. Because in order to complete the transaction, you have to have somebody else that's willing to participate. Slavery existed way before. It's just that Europeans figured it out and they said, well, listen, we could take that problem off of y'all hands. Y'all don't want to continue to fight wars with people over and over again and the survivors of these tribes that you continue to battle. Let's go into a transactional agreement. Let's go into a transactional agreement. Let's, let's participate in capitalism. They sold their own people. Participated, participated in the Atlantic slave trade, got the bad end of the stick, and now they're saying that, wait a minute, slavery isn't right. There was black slave owners within the United States of America. Look it up. It was black people that were slave owners in the United States of America. Slavery has existed since the beginning of time. Even if you go all the way into the Bible, 
If you dig into the Bible, indentured servitude was a thing. So you can't complain about the very thing that you participated in just because you didn't get the good end of the stick or you didn't benefit from it as much as they did. They negotiated better than you. Let's continue. Along with El Haj Maligel Shabazz, Malcolm X, fellow Pan-Africanist, child of the Garvey movement, I would agree, capitalism has no solutions in it for black people. But what we have amongst us is we have capitalist-minded neo-Negroes who try to seduce black people into thinking that imitating the white man's economic system offers some hope for black economic liberation. And that is totally dishonest. It is opportunistic. It has no evidence to support it. Cap then why do you keep telling people to hit the cash app then? Why do you sit here and have a conversation about affirmative action and then more money is going to be contributed into HBCUs, which then you want to force the administrators of that money to then be accountable for how it is that they spend in it. Why do you talk about the economic engine that drives growth within black communities? He's wrong about it. Why are you petitioning people to send you money in order to be able to build your school then? How will you sustain this school? The proposal, the proposal was that it's a tuition-based system. Well, how do you think that people are going to be able to pay for tuition for these children that you're going to educate? Just curious. I'm going to be reading Super Chat shortly. Shout out to Jaleel. How do you propose that people then pay for this education? Because if you want to completely remove yourself from the system, because you're saying that you don't want, you don't want anybody to play a role that is of a pale skin and the success of what it is that you're building because you need to do for us, by us, then how do you then generate the revenue in order to maintain, to pay the teachers, to, to uh, do the property taxes? How do you take care of this? How do you do the, how do you keep the lights on? How do you keep the lights on? Love it or hate it, it's the best system. And it's not perfect, but I believe that capitalism is a phenomenal system because it rewards those that take care. Even if you want to go biblically, God rewarded those that did for themselves. Go read the story of the talents. Capitalism has never saved anybody. It didn't save Europe. It didn't save Asia. It didn't save Africa. Capitalism is not a system that one uses to liberate. Capital and I, I am okay with him saying whatever his opinion is. What I do want, want him to say at the end of this conversation, though, is I want him to give us a better alternative. Because it's easy for somebody to say, I don't like communism, I don't like socialism, I don't like capitalism. But it's very difficult for them to then give you another solution while at the same time participating in it. You know what capitalism is? Let me tell you what capitalism is. Capitalism is when I reached out or my people reached out to Dr. Umar Johnson and he said, I would never tell what nobody's prices is. He says, listen, in order for us to come and do your podcast, it's going to cost you X amount of dollars. Now, I would assume he's saying it's going to cost you X amount of dollars because this is how I value my time. This is what my worth is. So he's capitalizing off of his visibility that is then built off of a system that white people made, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. So all of these platforms are then giving you an opportunity and a vehicle for you to be able to generate more revenue, such as selling your services, which is a good service, him being able to communicate online. He charges for it. And then I look at the value proposition and I say, okay, do I want to pay for your hotel? Do I want to pay for your flight? Do I want to pay for you to be able to come over here and talk? Let me look at the value proposition. Oh, okay, listen, I've built a vehicle that allows for me to be able to put that content out, possibly possibly monetize it. This is what my return on investment is going to be. I'm willing to work and then put in that and compensate you for your time. This is capitalism. This is literally capitalism. When he says, listen, I'm doing interviews. Tap in, 
see what it's going to cost you, and we're going to get this bag together. What do you think that that is? What do you think that that is? Capitalism is the exploitation of the many by the few. Capitalism seeks to make 99% of the world the dependency of the 1% of the world. In America, we have about 100 Europeans who own more wealth than everybody else in the country. Than everybody else in the country. And I'm looking for the solution. That's all I'm saying. I want to see the alternative solution because the one thing that I see from blackity blacks a lot of times is that they always saying what they don't like is very difficult for them to tell you what the alternative solution is. So I'm going to see what he got to say. And globally, there's about a thousand people who own more wealth than the rest of the world put together. That is capitalism. How can anyone believe that a system as exploitative, selfish, and unfair as that can be used to liberate African people? Capitalism cannot be on the table of discussion if we're talking liberation uh, economics. As far as the privatization of industry, I believe that everything should be nationalized or at least should be considered to be nationalized unless the government has a rationale that would justify why any of the major industries are in the hands of private citizens. And I would dare argue that nobody but a capitalist would want to put critical industries in the hands of private citizens. For example, I'm gonna let him finish. why I'm is a, I'm, food... Now, I, I want to break down nationalism for y'all so that y'all understand what he's talking about. ...in the hands of private citizens. Okay? Why is health care in the hands of private citizens? Why is water in the hands of private citizens? Anything that is critically necessary for the survival of humanity should never be privatized. Because when you privatize food, when you privatize land, when you privatize agriculture, when you privatize water, when you privatize medical health care, you are in essence giving individuals control over the lives of others. And now let me tell you why things are privatized, okay? I'm gonna break down exactly to you guys why privatization is good, but it's, it's generally marketed as bad, okay? So let's go into nationalism first, right? Because national, nationalism is largely uh, you basically divesting from the generalization of everything in order for you to exclude yourself for your own personal gain or interest depending on whatever group you are part of. So for example, you can say, well, you know, I don't like what's going on over there in America, and so in order to do the best thing that's in the best interest of Africa, we need to disassociate ourselves with how it is that they go about doing things, but only if it's in the best interest of us. The problem is that we're in a global society. We're in a global society. We're in a global economy. So the things that you do then affect what it is that I have going on over here. And if I want to trade with you, similar to what it is that they did when it came to, to, the, to the Atlantic slave trade, if I want to trade with you, then I have to be able to identify the value that I get from it. If I want to trade with you, I'll give you an example of what happens and how it, how it affects other people. There's nations suing the largest polluters of the world right now. Why? Because it actually factors into the warming of the planet. How does that affect them? Well, some of their islands and some of the, the nations in which they exist in are going underwater and they're drowning because the sea levels are rising. So if the United States and China, for example, through concrete and the farming of animals for the consumption of the people and they profit off of it, right, from a capitalistic perspective and they feed their country and they feed their nation and they got cars and they made modern life conveniences, and those are the ones that's contributing to the methane gas that's going into the air, which then raises up the climate temperature and melts off all of the polar ice caps and then raises the sea level. And then you not benefiting from it. What happens is your nation is then affected as a result of it while we continue to hoard all of the money. You suffer. We benefit. That's the end. of That's war. That's called digital and financial warfare. 
Digital and financial warfare. War is not just the thing that people go and shoot guns for. War is usually emph emphasized over resources based off of how it is, based off of how it is that it's affecting what it is that's going on within your country. But the problem with this is, well, if you want to be a nationalist or you want to stand on your own, then that means that you won't petition for help from anybody. You're going to eat, survive, grow your own food, have your own military. If anything happens to you, don't ask us to come in and come in and save you. Right? And so when I tell y'all and I break down and I say, well, listen, it's a war. But the war is not based off of whether it's a race war or anything like that. The war is a class war. Because your ability to be able to, your ability to be able to compete based off of how much money you make and then leveraging those resources in order to support your lifestyle is the thing that people are fighting over. It's the reason why we're having conversations based off of inflation. It's the reason why we're having conversations based off of who's going into what country and the Ukraine war and all of that. Man, they don't give a fuck about Ukraine. You think that the, that, that the United States and China is warring over the products that's being shipped back and forth? They're not. You know where the biggest war is? Semiconductor chips. Because those are the things that powers the technology that we're going to use tomorrow in order to emphasize or in order to make sure that our economies thrive. So basically, what am I telling you? What I'm telling you is that there is no one-size-fits-all solution. It's a combination of all. Capitalism isn't perfect, but capitalism has been the best driver in a vehicle based off of what? Based off of us using what is in our best interest in order to enrich us and then put everybody else at, at, at arm's length of what it is that we want them to do. When we want to subject uh, North Korea to sanctions, if we want to subject uh, uh, Russia to sanctions, then we can leverage the power of what it is that we've been able to build, especially from a resource and a military perspective, in order to control the rest of the world. It's not perfect, but there's always going to be winners and losers. And guess what? I'd rather be a winner than I am a loser. And losers don't get to tell winners what to do. Losers don't get to tell winners what to do. That. I would just like to um, say, add in here, that you know, as far as we are concerned, there's basically two types of economic system. One controlled by a minority, or the one controlled by the majority. And capitalism is controlled by the minority. And, and, if, you, and if you see that, you can understand why we are experiencing so much Capitalism is not controlled by the, by the minority. That's a myth. They will tell you, well, okay, 1% of the population owns 90% of the real estate. Okay, fair enough. But their dependency on that and the value of it is based off of your belief in it. The, the, somebody said, why is the dollar worthless? The dollar is worthless as paper, but the dollar is not worthless based off of your belief in it. The value of a dollar is based off of whether or not you believe that it's something that we can use to buy and trade in order to make sure that we can feed ourselves and not kill each other. The value of something is your belief in it. If you don't believe in it, it has no value. Want me to give you an example? I keep telling y'all to stop buying these diamonds. You don't think that they've had the technology to grow lab-grown diamonds since the beginning of time? You don't think that lab-grown diamonds in which is coming with the same color cut clarity is, is, is the same as mined diamonds? You think that there was a shortage of diamonds? No. It was an artificial insure, uh, uh, shortage based off of the idea that scarcity creates value, which they, they then could capitalize off of it, right? So what I'm telling you is that the value in it is your belief in it. It's largely believed by jewelers. I was talking to one in the airport yesterday that rubies and all of these other precious stones are more valuable than diamonds now. Ad Davis said fine art. Agreed. You know why this watch is worth more than what I pay for it? Scarcity. Your lack of ability, your, your inability to be able to get your hands on it, afford it, and have access to it even if you had money for it. Scarcity creates value. It's a mental manipulation of how it is that we live in society that then determines what the value of something is. More people that adopt it, the more valuable it becomes.
is in our lives as people all around the world. The European has done an excellent job. Uh, he has done a marvelous job convincing black people globally that capitalism can actually work. But when you look closely at capitalism, you can see that capitalism gives rise to poverty. Right. You, you, you can't be capitalist and not believe in poverty because in order for the rich to get rich, they have to exploit people's labor at a low cost. If there is not... And see, this is where they lose me. It's not exploiting people's labor at a low cost. What we're doing is we're evaluating the return on investment. And it's two different ways to look at that. It's a risk that rich people take or successful people take that allows for them to be able to capitalize off of whatever it is that they're investing in. It's because just as just as risky is the fact that you can lose everything. It's a lot of people. A lot of people took a lot of risk and they lost everything and nobody talks about them. We only talk about the success stories. We don't we don't talk about the fact that more people have become poor, lost out on everything, got their whole villages wiped out, their, their entire family worth. Everything has gone down the drain as a result of the risk that's taken, right? And so when you say the return on investment, just because I pay you for your service don't mean that I'm going to be able to sell whatever it is that you make. I take a risk in which I, sometimes I win and sometimes I lose. And so that is the beauty of capitalism is that there is no safety net and your ability to be able to be successful is based off of your effort and understanding of whatever it is that you're risking it. If, I, if somebody goes and they, they hire him and they pay him, how does he determine the value? How does he determine how much he's going to charge somebody for whatever it is that he talks about? How does he determine the value? You know how he determines the value? of what he thinks that you're going to make from it or what he thinks, more importantly, not even what he thinks you're going to make from it, how much he thinks he can charge. Nobody goes into it on the other side and says, no rapper, no artist, they don't go into the shows and say, hey, what y'all going to make off of it? They look at how much they can possibly charge you and then they go from there. And the determinant factor for whether or not they're going to take your offer is for whether or not they think that they can get a better offer for the same amount of work. That's capitalism on their side because they're looking at whether or not they can get as much money as they possibly can, can from it. They don't give a fuck about the promoter. They don't care about whether or not you make money. I ain't never had one person that I didn't ever did business with, whether it was on a podcast, whether it was a paid, a paid appearance, or whether it was a show that I paid them for, ever come back to me and say, hey, fam, did you do good on that investment? I have never had one person that comes back to me and say, hey, did you break even or did you do well on that? You know what they do after they get their money? Hey, thanks, fam. I appreciate you. I have never had one employee, one contractor that has ever come back to me and said, hey, I want to make sure that you benefited off of that also. They provide a service. They get as much money as they possibly can and they keep it moving. Just as they should. The only thing I ask for is, hey, don't come back over here talking about what it is that they think that they should be making after I go ahead and bust down this fucking bag. You see what I'm saying? A large, exploitable class of cheap labor, there is no capitalism. And that's why you can always find poor people a stone's throw away from the richest businesses and corporations in any country because capitalism is the mother of poverty. And keep in mind, all of the dysfunctional major institutions that we live under globally as African people are products or byproducts of capitalism. Mass incarceration is one of the biggest byproducts of capitalism. Why? Because capitalism is all about what? Maximum gain, minimum costs. So that means people are being laid off. I mean. Look at what we've seen. Microsoft is laying off thousands. McDonald's. McDonald's was always a place you can go and get a job, although the food isn't worth anything nutritiously, but you could always get a job. McDonald's is la laying people. Walmart 
is laying people off. And now that you have artificial intelligence, you talk about an economic holocaust. What are our people supposed to do when they find robots that can take over mm -hmm. half the jobs that we are now working at to feed our families? Want me to tell you what you do? You go and you, you innovate. You figure out how to add value into people's lives and then market it to them so that you can get compensation, fair compensation, based off of what you think your value is. And if they don't give you no money, then they don't, don't come back and ask nobody else for a job. Because you know what i seen? i seen people out there protesting and saying, oh, we want 15 fucking dollars an hour. And so when capital capitalism will say, capitalism will say, well, listen, we don't think you worth $15 an hour because we made X amount of dollars and you don't give a fuck about the losses and you still stealing from me. So then capitalism says, okay, well, we're going to out-innovate. We're going to put some robots in here. We're going to put some artificial intelligence. We're going to get rid of these diversity, equity, inclusion jobs. And we're going to make more money as a result of it. How are we supposed to feed our families? Go make a product that you think that the people will support then. You can't be a beggar and complaining about the master at the same time. <laughs> you can't be a beggar and complaining about the person that's providing for you at the same time. Artificial intelligence is going to create the same problem for African people that slavery created for the European working class. And that is white men during slavery cannot feed their families. And one of the biggest reasons for the abolitionist movement was not to free black people because white folks didn't care about us, whether they was rich or poor. But white men needed work and they saw the slave as the barrier to them being able to take care of their families. So when you study the origins of the abolitionist movement, it was not out of uh, righteousness or religion. It was not out of a concern or for the humanity of the slave. The abolitionist movement grew out of an economic necessity for white men to find work. And, and you know what the interesting thing about this whole thing is, guys? At the same time that y'all saying that they're they going to replace our jobs, y'all also complaining about the immigration laws that's happening in Florida that's forcing employers to then lay off uh, illegal workers from the jobs that y'all don't want. Ooh, Anton just hit him with a bar that they don't like. You're also complaining about the jobs that you don't want to do that you feel like is beneath you, but then at the same time saying, how are we going to feed our family? You don't want to grind. You don't want to be out there picking oranges and cotton and doing the construction shit. You don't want to do none of that. You want to sit Work from home, feel good about yourself, feel entitled, get up when you want to, show up to the meeting when, it, when it's convenient for you. You do what you want to do when you want to do it, and then you want to tell other people on how it is that they're supposed to pay you because you know better than them of what the value is that you bring. It's crazy, man.